alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As you guys saw last week, on July 4th, we didn't do a video. We didn't want to interrupt your guys' vacations. So we pushed it. And we did one about Imam Hassan a few days later. Inshallah, today we will be talking about Imam Hussain alayhi salam and his whole life, Karbala, what happened in the land of Karbala. And inshallah, we'll be talking about Imam Zain al Abidin. We will be starting to talk about two Imams each hal'a, inshallah, two Imams each hal'a. And we are trying our best to do two hal'at every single week. So we're trying to cover four Imams every single week because we want to finish before Muharram starts so we can start preparing ourselves for Muharram and the speeches. So inshallah, stay tuned. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falak min sharri ma khalak wa min sharri ghasikan idha waqad wa min sharri nafatati fil uqad wa min sharri hasidan idha hasad Sadaq Allahu al-Aliyyul Adheem Imam Hussain alayhi salam's father was Imam Ali alayhi salam and his mother was Sayyida Fatima alayhi salam and his grandfather was Rasulullah Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad Imam Hussain alayhi salam when Rasulullah found out he was born he rushed to the house of Sayyida Fatima grabbed, Rasul, grabbed Imam Hussain and put him in his arms like this He's, there's a way that say he says the azan Some that say he said the ikama He had him in his arms He said it into his ears And after that he started to cry Rasulullah started to cry Sayyida Fatima asked Rasulullah Why are you crying? Rasulullah replied Said Akhi Jibra'il alayhi salam Said that this kid Hussein Will face martyrdom Martyrdom He will be killed in a very harsh way But Rasulullah after said but there will be a nation that will follow Hussein until the day of judgment. There will be people, a nation following Hussein until the day of judgment. After that, when Hussein reached the age of four or five, Rasulullah used to take him to the mosque with him, just like he would do with Imam Hassan alayhi salam. They would go to the mosque and Rasulullah would tell his companions, you see this kid Hussein, you see him? Remember that face, remember that face of Hussein. Hussein was extremely religious. He would go to the ceremonies of Rasulullah. He would listen to the ceremonies of Rasulullah. When Hussein reached the age of five, somebody would say six, in 631, 632 AD, his grandfather Rasulullah stushhid. Some say due to poison. Some say due to an illness. Somebody would say 40 to 90 days after the istishhad of Rasulullah, his mother Sayyida Fatima was pushed like against the wall by a door by Umar and Uthman and it wasn't like a door like that one. Like it had spikes on the door, sources say. Like it wasn't a regular door, it was a strong door. And sources say her rib cage was broke, parts of her stomach broke. Even Sayyid Muhsin stood hid because of this act. For the next 25 years, so from around 632 to 657 AD, this story is going to be very similar to the story of Imam Hassan alayhi salam and Imam Ali alayhi salam because they were with each other their whole entire life. They were extremely close. So from 632 AD to 657 AD, sources say they didn't get into wars, political affairs, who's the next Khalifa. They didn't get into that discussion. They just kept to themselves. Sources even say in those 25 years, Imam Hussein performed Hajj 24 times. 24 out of the 25, which proves that he obviously didn't have enough time to go into war after he just got out of Hajj. In 657 AD, the third Khalifa, Uthman, not Allah Ali, died. And when he died, the people saw what Imam Ali, what Abu Bakr did, what Umar did, what Uthman did, and they said, we can't pick somebody else like that was close to them. So they decided to pick Imam Ali alayhi salam. And when they picked Imam Ali alayhi salam, Imam Ali said, give me a few days and let me think about this offer. After that, they, Imam Ali thought about the offer and he didn't see anybody else say, oh, I'm a rest of the Khalifa. So he took the offer and he became the Khalifa. Right when Imam Ali became the Khalifa, Muawiyah was very mad, sources say sad, that the people chose Imam Ali over him. And like 
it's kind of obvious why they chose Imam Ali over Muawiyah. Like, Muawiyah is from, he was good with Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman, and they saw what Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman, they, they did nothing good. So, he was very sad, so he started the first fitna, the Battle of Basra. It was Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, and their people against Talha Zubair and Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, not Allah Ali. And they won that war very quickly. So to say it was a one day war, so to say it was a two day war, but it was a quick war. After that, this was 657 or 658 AD, it was the Battle of Sifin. They say it was Imam Ali, Ali Islam, Imam Hassan Ali Islam, and Imam Hussein Ali Islam, and 10,000 of their people against the people that wanted to go to war. They won that war as well. And then 659 or 660 AD, they went against the Khawarij. Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, only them three. Ali Islam, only them three went up against the Khawarij. They won that battle as well. After that, one of the Khawarij, Abdurrahman ibn Mujdam, Naatullah Ali, while Imam Ali, alayhi salam, was in prostration during prayer, while he was in sujood, he came and he hit Imam Ali, alayhi salam, on the head with a sword. Sources say was quoted a thousand times. It's an exaggeration. It's trying to say that he could have killed a thousand people with that sword. That's what they're trying to say. They say that he hit Imam Ali on the head. Sources say it was the 17th of Ramadan. Some sources say 19th, but it's around those two days. When Imam Hassan, Ali Islam, and Imam Hussein heard about this, they they were enraged. They were enraged. Like, how could somebody do this? And sources say he was he was a part of Imam Ali's companions a while ago. Like he was he was there. So they said, Oh, we gotta go kill him. Like we we're gonna go kill him. He he's killed Imam Ali alayhi salam. Imam Ali was poisoned. He wasn't dead yet, but he was about to die. What did Imam Ali alayhi salam say? He said, Don't go and kill him. Just go and hit him an equal hit. If he dies, he dies. He doesn't die, he doesn't die. So what did they go and do? They went and go hit Abdurrahman ibn Muslim on the head. Abdurrahman ibn Muslim died. So from about from the time of Imam Ali's Istishad, 661 to 670, Imam Hassan became the Khalifa. And you guys know what happened with Imam Hassan's Khalifa. He made a treaty with Muawiyah. Muawiyah didn't follow the treaty. And then the wife of Imam Hassan, Judah, poisoned Imam Hassan because she was bribed by Muawiyah. Sources say she was even a cousin of Muawiyah. So she poisoned Imam Hassan alayhi salam. And sources say Imam Hussein became the Khalifa from 670 to 680. And from 680 to 683 was when Yazid ruled. And when Yazid ruled, Imam Hussein went to Mecca to go Hajj. When he went to go Hajj, they got a letter. Imam Hussein got a letter. Oh, Yazid's in... Yazid right now, he's in Kufa and he's torturing us, he's hurting us, and he's torturing the Shias, he's trying to kill the Shias. So what did Imam Hussein say? Go send, he went to go tr send his most trusted companion, he went to send Muslim Ibn Aqil. He sent Muslim Ibn Aqil, he's like, go see what's happening in Kufa and return to me. So he sent Muslim Ibn Aqil, and the reason Yazid was doing this was because he was enraged about how Imam Hussein still didn't give oath of allegiance to Yazid. If you guys didn't know, Yazid used to do haram. He used to drink alcohol. He used to kill Shias. He used to put Shias in jail. He used to have pet dogs, have pet monkeys. He used to just do haram as much as he can. So Imam Hussein sent Muslim Ibn Aqil. When he sent Muslim Ibn Aqil, Muslim Ibn Aqil arrived and Yazid ordered his people to kill Muslim Ibn Aqil. Before Muslim Ibn Aqil died, what did he do? He sent Imam Hussein a letter. Before Imam Hussein reached, letter reached him, he went to five places. Total, he went to 14 places before he reached Karbala. The first place was Surat, and then there was a second place, a third place, and a fourth place. They're not really important. But in those four places, he tried bringing people for jihad to go against Yazid. Because Yazid shouldn't be the, the ruler. With how much haram he did, he's just going to inflict bad on the others, and the others are going to follow him. So he didn't want Yazid to be the ruler. He would want anybody that rules the way the Prophet ruled, or the way his father ruled, Imam Ali alayhi salam, or his brother Imam Hassan alayhi salam. He wanted somebody like that. So he gathered 
from those four sources say he did not even gather one person. He didn't gather a lot of people. In the fifth spot, sources say it's called Zabala. This is when he got the news that Muslim Ibn Aqil was killed. Imam Hussein was very sad that Muslim Ibn Aqil was killed. At that point, he read the letter that Muslim Ibn Aqil sent to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. It said, Imam Hussein, there's 20,000 people in Kufa waiting for you right now and they want to kill you. So what did Imam Hussein alayhi salam say? Why would I go to Kufa? If they're going to kill me, there's no point in me going to Kufa. He wasn't scared. It just wasn't the smart choice. So he decided not to go back to Kufa. He continued with his journey. The sixth and the seventh place, he did the same thing. He tried gathering people. The eighth place, Sharaf. When he went to Sharaf, him and his people were walking. It was not a lot of people. It was not a lot of people yet. It still at the end wasn't a lot of people. At the end of the 14th place, it was about 40 people. But he was walking and they saw there was a sandstorm at the time. And through, they could see soldiers, like imprints of soldiers. And they thought, oh, it might have been Yazid's army coming for us early. They weren't scared, but they just did a smart choice and they went and like moved away. They asked the people, is there a place we can like scout and like stand and see who they are? They saw who they were and they were Hur, Hur's army and his people. So it's just say there was a thousand people with Hur at that time. So what did Imam Hussein do? Imam Hussein gave the people of Hur water. There was some people that were thirsty to the point they could not even drink water yet. Like that's how thirsty they were. They couldn't even get the water and drink it. So Imam Hussein had to give some of them water. Like he put them by his own hand into their mouth. After that, what did Hur try doing? He tried telling Imam Hussein, return back, to just go back. There's no point in you going to Karbala because if you go to Karbala, you're gonna, you're gonna die. He saw how good and how pure Imam Hussein was. He didn't, even if it was somebody random, he would still help him. This is why we shouldn't stop fighting for Hussein. It's like, that's important how good he was, how nice he was to strangers. This is like all the Imams, this is why we shouldn't stop fighting for Ahl al-Bayt in general. This is how good they were. So the next six spots were the same. He tried bringing people to fight against Yazid. But in the 10th spot, Baiza, Baiza, their sources say Baiza, Baiza, he went and he gave a powerful ceremony and he got a few people with him. Like, oh, Yazid, Nobody should be following Yazid. This was a part of his ceremony. Like nobody should be following Yazid. He's he's promoting the haram. He's promoting doing bad. He's promoting drinking alcohol. He's promoting killing. He's promoting putting people in prison for no reason. So he was trying to get people together. So when he arrived in Karbala, he asked the person, "What is this place called?" The person said, "This place is called Karbin Wabala." And then he thought. Oh, this is the spot my grandfather Rasulullah told me that I would stush it in. So, and the guy also said this is the place of horror and terror. Like, this is the place where there's going to be hardships, there's going to be terror, it's going to be pain here. So, Imam Hussein sources say he arrived in Karbala at the second of Muharram. So, when he arrived in Karbala, he told his people to gather by the water, like sit by the water, because they need water. So on the second day, they gathered water. And then the fourth day, who came? Shemir. And they say an army of 4,000 people. And keep in mind, Imam Hussein's army was only 40 people. And Shemir's army was 4,000 people. And they told him to leave. This was on the 4th of Muharram. They had water though. On the 7th of Muharram, from the 4th to 7th, nothing happened. On the 7th of the Muharram, there was no more water left. The kids were all crying. Sakina was crying. The daughter of Hussein was crying. All the kids were crying. Abdullah was crying. Jafar was crying. Osman was crying. The kids of Sayyidah Zainab were crying. Aun and Muhammad. They were, everybody was crying. They didn't have any water. On the 8th of Muharram, nothing happened. On the 9th of Muharram, nothing happened. Except the army of Shemir was trying. They were getting in war-like position, in format. So Abu Fadl al-Abbas and Ali al-Akbar went and they asked them can we have one more day to like ask read dua pray do as much good as we can they said yeah on the night of the ninth of muharram while imam hussein's camp were praying were reading dua they were the best they can be and they were still reading dua and they were still praying just to go to show you how good ahl al-bayt were 
they were already amazing and they were still putting more on top of it. While they were doing that, what were the people of Mu'aw of Yazid doing and the people of Shemit? They were partying, they were dancing, they were singing, they were drinking alcohol. Alhamdulillah, there were 30 wise people at that time in the army of Yazid and Shemit. 30 of them said, who, who does it look like it's on the path of God? The army of Imam Hussein or the army of Shemir and Yazid, the ones partying and the ones dancing and singing and drinking alcohol, or the ones that are are reading du'as, the ones that are praying. So 30 of them made the right choice, and they went over to the camp of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Now, when Imam Hussein saw this, he didn't want to put people against their will. He didn't want them to fight for him. So what did he say? He told them, you see you 70 right here. I don't want to put you guys against your will. If you guys want to leave, you guys can leave. So... He saw that no one left. He thought maybe they might be embarrassed of themselves for leaving Imam Hussein. Islam. So what did Imam Hussein do? He took out the candle. There was no light back then, obviously. He had a candle. He took out the candle. And when he took out the candle, he said, Even if you made an oath to me that you were not gonna leave me, your oath is lifted. You don't gotta you don't gotta go against you don't gotta go against your oath. It's lifted by me, and you are allowed to leave. So he turned the candle back on, all of them were still there. The companions all said, Ya Hussein, we're going to be one strong rock for you. Even if we have to die 70 times and we got to come back, we're still going to be a strong rock for you. And we're not going to leave you no matter what. So they stayed the whole night, you know, praying, reading dua. And when it time, became time for the morning, they did the adhan. And two soldiers from the army of Shemir, Yazid, came over to the army of Imam Hussein. It was Hur and his son. They came over to the army of Imam Hussein and said, We want to be the first martyrs. We want to we want to face martyrdom first. So they were the first to face martyrdom and then the companions. Then who came? The family of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Before that, they saw that the, the children were all crying, We need water. Because they went three days from the 7th of Muharram till the 10th of Muharram in a desert. In a desert without water. For three days straight, no water. So they were extremely thirsty and they were kids. They weren't like like strong like Imam Hussein. So what did Imam Hussein alayhi salam? He said Abu, Abu Fadl Abbas, he told him to go get some water from the ocean. When Abu Fadl Abbas, it was the Euphrates River. When Abu Fadl Abbas went to go get water, he didn't even drink for himself. That's how pure he was. He said, how am I supposed to drink when there's kids over there? Still, they can't drink. They didn't drink yet. There's Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He still never drank water. Ali al-Akbar didn't drink water. Jafar, Abdullah, Osman, the kids of Sayyidah Zainab never drank. The kids of Imam Hassan still never drank. How am I supposed to drink water? There's Sakina. Sakina and Abu Fadl Abbas had an extremely close relationship. And if he drank water, he couldn't even drink water. He was just thinking about it. Like, how can I drink before them? He couldn't even drink water. So... He filled up water and he was taking it back to where he was taking it back to the camp. As he was taking it back to the camp, what happened? They The people grabbed their spears and their swords and they took off the right arm of Abu Fadl al-Abbas. When they took off the right arm of Abu Fadl al-Abbas, Abu Fadl al-Abbas didn't stop yet. He kept going. He needed to deliver that water. What did they do next? They took off the left arm of Abu Fadl al-Abbas. So the kids did nothing to the army of Yazid. The soldiers of Imam Hussein alayhi salam did nothing to the army of Yazid. They just didn't want to give allegiance to him. And this is what he does to them. Where's Islam at this point? How could people follow somebody who makes kids not allowed to drink water? After three days in the desert, of, after them being thirsty, he's not allowing them to drink water. He took off the hands of, of, of Abu Fadl al-Abbas, both of them, not only, not only the right arm. He took off the right and the left. How are they going to support someone who drinks alcohol? How are they going to support someone who kills Shias, who imprisons Shias? So after that, Abu Fadl al-Abbas was, sources say, he was able to deliver the water. But they say that the water had the taste of blood and water. So what does it taste like? It tasted like metal, sources say. And they say that the water didn't taste good. Like it, it was a weird taste to the water. It was metal. It wasn't didn't taste like regular water. After that, Abu Fadl al-Abbas is tushhit. Who went up first? Oh, Ali al-Akbar. Ali al-Akbar was a, a brave warrior, a fierce warrior. He also stushhid three days without water. He wasn't strong enough. He wasn't at his, like, the strongest he can possibly be. It was three days without water. 
Next went the the kids. There was Abdullah, Jafar, Osman. They went and they died as well. Who else went? The kids of Sayyidah Zainab. There was there was Muhammad. There was Aum. They both died. After that, what happened? Yeah, Hussein alayhi salam saw that Ali al Azhar was extremely thirsty. What did he say? He went out into the battlefield. He went to go get him. He went out to the battlefield. He rose him up like that. He's like, if you're not going to give water to me, at least to give it to this little kid. This little kid did nothing to you. So what did Shemir do? He hired his best marksmen, people with the bow. Hurmala. He told him, Hurmala, kill this baby right now. Because he saw that people were dividing. There was some people that were like, oh, Haram, this baby needs water. And there were some saying, why would we give this baby water? Not Allah alayhi. They didn't give him any water. And what did they do? Hurmala, what did he do? He grabbed the arrow and he shot it into the neck of Ali al Azhar. Ali al Azhar was a six month old baby. So the arrow was as big as his whole neck and it pretty much slit his throat. After that, Imam Hussein returned the baby back to the camp. When he returned him back to the camp and went back to the battlefield, they sources say they ran at him like, like bloodhounds, like dogs, like dogs that have never eaten yet. That's how that's how crazy they were to killing Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Sources say when Imam Hussein would get close, they'd all move back. They'd all get scared. They didn't want to fight Imam Hussein alayhi salam. They would get so scared. So what did they do? They took attacks from far. They would grab rocks. They would throw them. Spears, they throw them. They would bow and, bow and arrow. They'd shoot them at Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Sources say he took more than 100 hits to the upper body because he didn't have his back turned. Like the, like the soldiers of Yazid, they were all scared running. They never hit his back. They all hit his, his chest. So what happened? Eventually, it was too much. 100 hits to the chest, more than 100 hits with rocks, spears, and bow and arrows. He couldn't. He fell on his back. Sources say Shemir came up. He sat on his chest. Azamalakam al-Ajr bi al al-Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Imam Zain al abidin was born on the 5th of Sha'ban in 38 AH, AH. His father was Imam Hussein alayhi salam and his mother was Shahr Banu. Sources say she was a Persian. She was not a Muslim, but she did become a Muslim after, but she was originally a Persian. So we're going to continue with what happened in Karbala. On the 10th of Karbala, this happened in the time after Imam Hussein's istishad. Imam Zain al abidin was ill and he was in the tent. What did they do? The, the soldiers of Yazid and Shemir, Imam Hussein and his soldiers weren't enough. They came into the, the woman of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, his sisters, his kids, his, like Imam Hassan's kids. There was Sayyidah Zainab's people. He, they came, they burned their tents down, they looted their tents. They took everything they wanted. And after they say Hur's wife came and offered them food. She came and offered them food. What did they do? All of them didn't even want to take from the food. With how thirsty they were, with how hungry they were, they didn't take. The only person who took was Sakina. And she took the water. And what did she do? She went and ran over to Ali al Azgar And she put water in his mouth, not knowing that he was dead yet. So she put water in his mouth and she put the water back. She gave it back to her. After that, they took all of them. They took them as prisoners to Yazid. When they took them as prisoners to Yazid, Yazid started laughing. Oh, you see what happened when you don't give your oath of allegiance to me? And what did Imam Zain al Abidin say? He said, Islam is not dead. Before Imam Hussein, is to sh like he died, he told Sayyidah Zainab, you gotta defend Imam Zain al Abidin because if you don't, Islam is done. It's done. So Imam Zain al Abidin said, Islam is still alive. Well, Yazid said, How is Islam still alive? He's like, Just wait till Salat al Duhr. Salat al Duhr came and he. Imam Zain al-Abdin gave out the Azan. When he said the Azan, what did Yazid's initial reaction? Go kill him, go kill him right away, go kill him. We can't have him uh, spreading the message of God anymore. So when they tried to kill him, Sayyidah Zainab stood up like a wall, like a wall. That's how strong she was and that's how brave she was. She stood up like a wall in front of Imam Zain al-Abdin and she didn't let him kill him. So after that, they put the, all of the people of Sayyidah Zainab, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam, all of their, their, their people, they put them into prison. They took them as prisoners. 
they kept him in prison for about a year. And keep in mind, not a lot of people knew what happened in Karbala. But after a year, a lot of people knew what happened in Karbala. And there was threats going towards Yazid. Yazid would have not let them out. They, they would have died in prison if the threats didn't come in. Yazid was scared for his life. Th that's how weak Yazid was. He was scared for his life. So he released them. He released the Imam Zain al-Abideen, Sayyidah Zainab and their people. He released them all. And he asked Sayyidah Zainab, Sayyidah Zainab, what would you like to do right now? He was trying to be nice to her, like show to the people, because there was people around. Like Sayyidah Zainab, what do you want to do right now? Sayyidah Zainab was like, we want to hold a gathering in Damascus, and we want to tell everybody what happened in Karbala. He's like, okay, we'll do that. They told everybody what happened in Karbala, and while they were at Karbala, they showed what they did. They showed the decapitated bodies, the heads cut off. They showed everything. It was an extremely gruesome scene. And they took the clothes off, every single one of them. So Sayyidah Zainab had to clothe them. Sources saying she had to bury them. She obviously had help, but that's what happened. After that, they all returned to Medina. Except the wife of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Umm Rabab. She was not the, the mother of Imam Zain al-Abideen. So when they returned back to Medina, what did they see? Saw Yazid's army destroying Medina. They were pulling it apart. They were hurting the Muslims. Imam Zain al-Abideen tried to help and he couldn't. That's how crazy, that's how extreme they were at that time. He tried doing as much as he can and he couldn't. He was overpowered by how much soldiers there were. After that, what did they do? Sayyidah Zainab delivered two powerful sermons. Not only one, two. She delivered two powerful sermons exposing Yazid in his own court. She exposed him. Two powerful sermons. Imam Zain al-Abideen also gave one powerful sermon. He exposed him as well. He... In those sermons, they explained what happened in Karbala, the bad doings of Yazid, how he drinks alcohol, how can he lead as a Khalifa when alcohol is haram and the Khalifa is drinking alcohol. What are people going to think? Oh, alcohol is probably good. Let me start drinking it. They exposed him. Anything that Yazid ever did bad, Sayyidah Zainab covered it, Imam Zainal Abidin covered it. For the next 35 years of Imam Zainal Abidin's life, sources say he just taught Islam taught people how to pray he taught people what fasting was he taught people the quran and he did that for about 35 years he also was giving out food at night and sort of say people didn't even know who the food was coming from that's how dark it was he didn't really take credit he just gave it and people didn't even know who was giving out the food at night and sources say on the 25th of muharram in the 95th hijra that somebody that goes by the name of walid ibn abdul malik poisoned Imam Zain al abidin and he stood on that day but his life he helped people he taught people Islam he taught people Quran he taught people how to pray he taught people what fasting was if it wasn't for Imam Zain al abidin Islam wouldn't be here today that's what we can say because his son is Imam Muhammad al-Baqir who's the fifth Imam that will come after him and if Imam Zain al abidin went out to the battle of Karbala and died he was Islam would not be here today and I also want to say is we need to try being better than the generations before us like I just talked about what the generations before us did you guys heard what they did there was over 20,000 soldiers fighting 70 soldiers. They decapitated them. We got to be better than the generation before us. Generations, we can't be dealing with drugs. Can't be dealing with kids smoking at the age of 14. Kids smoking at the age of 16. We got to be a better community, a stronger community. For the Ahl al-Bayt in general, we got we to gotta take what they said and we got to use it. Like, they didn't just say it for no reason. We got to use it. We got to act on it. We got to spread it to future generations. Because there's not going to be a good generation until the generation previous to them is a good generation. We got to change that. We got to, if this generation is good and they pass it on to the next generation, the next generation is going to be good. And it's just going to be a, a cycle that keeps going on. So we got to try our best to, you know, be good so that the generation after us is good as well. آخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله next week or maybe Sunday تابعونا we will be talking about Imam Muhammad al Baqir عليه السلام and Imam Jafar al Sadiq عليه السلام the two people that you know that talk about science that open houses that open up school السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته